Welcome to What Does That Do? Where we take a look at obfuscated code and break it down to figure out exactly what it is doing. Let's get started. Hey everyone. Today we're going to talk about a file that caught my attention that I feel is sort of interesting, um, both in the way that it came to my attention as well as the way that it, it is actually functioning. This file here is a PowerShell script, and it came to my attention because the low number of hits on virus total, uh, combined with the uh, formatting of it, was a little bit uh, confusing. Virus total sees this file as uh, being only detected by three different vendors, ClamAV, Symantec, and Dr. Web. Uh, ClamAV and Dr. Web both agree that it's a uh, P, uh, PowerShell uh, file, PS1 PowerShell, and that it drops something. Um, Dr. Web calls it a mull drop, and ClamAV just says that it's a dropper agent. So, if we want to take a look at this and see how it's working, uh, we can just open it up in Atom here, and we can see that the first thing it does is set up a string variable, and it has lots of hexadecimal characters in here, but it also has a curious combination of uh, less than and greater than symbols to make these diamonds. And if we scroll through, one of the things we'll notice is that there are places where there are just absolutely huge chunks of these uh, gr less than and greater than signs, all the way down to... Here we have several hundred of them. Here we have probably close to a thousand of them. And then at the end here, we're doing a replace on all of those, replacing them with zeros, which means that what we have here actually is a whole lot of zeros at the end of a string. And in hex, zero, zero is a null character. So that's definitely an interesting thing. And then here we have a second variable and we have pairs of hexadecimal characters separated by a single one of the less than and greater than symbols. And that goes on for almost the rest of the file, all the way down to this last statement here, where we're doing a split of that second variable on these less than and greater thans. And then for each of those, we are prepending 0x and then converting it to a character and appending it and then invoking that expression. Now, we don't know exactly what it's going to be doing with the first variable, but we do know that it's turning all of these into zeros, and then it's definitely going to be doing something with it. We just haven't figured out exactly what yet. So my PowerShell isn't the greatest, so what I will what I can do is convert it to PHP, and what we end up doing here is setting the variable, and then here we do our string replace, replacing all of the less than and greater thans with zeros in there, just like we did, just like the PowerShell was doing. And then at the end, all we're doing here is for each exploding this on the uh, less than and greater thans, and then converting it to a decimal before converting it to a character and echoing it out. And when we do that and dump it into a new file, what we end up with is a new PowerShell script. Uh, it starts off by defining a function that has a, a, an output a byte array for an output and takes in a string. The first thing that it does functionally is it defines a new object that's a byte array that is uh, half the length of the of the variable we passed in, and then it loops over that the uh, the argument and converts it from base sixteen to a byte. Um, and appends it to the byte array before returning it. And here we have a new variable that has lots of very curious hx characters. And if we go through that to the end, we see that it's much like the first script was replacing less than and greater than with zeros. This is replacing hx with zeros. If we take a look here, the script is sending that this new variable through that original function and setting a byte array to it here. It's also referencing that initial variable from the first script. 
So now we have an idea of what it's going to be doing with that here. This variable is being referenced here and it's turning that into a byte array. It's defining a variable here called new pump, which is kind of interesting. Shib, seemingly random word. And then down here, we're starting to do replace string replacement. And what we have here is this string having this random string of characters replaced with ETTY. So before we get into that, if we're going to turn this into PHP, the first thing we need to do is set that up. We'll leave the function there for now because we'll, and we'll get back to that in a minute. We don't need the string type, but what we do need is we need to take that and then we need to call it two equals string replace there. And since we know that we're going to need the, the R set variable from the first script, we can take that also and just paste that in. So now we have these strings. Uh, we've changed them, so now we need to send in the new ones to this function. But in reality, all that that function is doing is exactly the same thing that we did with that for, for each loop. So rather than going through it, what we can do here is instead rewrite this function in PHP. And that's as simple as doing return me equals an empty string and then passing in an argument. And then here, all we're doing is return me dot equals hex deck substr with our index and taking a two character substring there and then returning return me. So now we've rewritten that function to spit out the correct values here for these. And now we have our new variables set to the actual bytes of these strings. We can leave these two alone and then let's take a look at what these are doing. Here we're just doing a replace of this string on this one and what we're ending up with is actually get type here we're actually creating invoke we have in then this random string and ke and we're replacing the random string with vo so that becomes invoke uh, here we're doing ge a random string od and we're replacing it with tmeth so we end up with get method this becomes a path name and that's c windows Microsoft.net framework v4033319 engine t ask.exe. So engine task.exe. This becomes load and this becomes simply dollar null. That's the reflection assembly. And then here we have some more variables being defined in order to create something that where we end up with hbar getting the results of the invoked command. So IEX with the backticks in there is just IEX and in PowerShell that's uh, an abbreviation for invoke expression. So we don't really need that, but finding out what these are and what these end up doing is going to be interesting. So here this variable is ref uh, reflection assembly, so that gets put there, and then this is a load, and we are loading this first byte array, or the, yeah, this first byte array that we've created here. And then once we've done that, so this is a loaded byte array one, so now that we've loaded that byte array, the next thing we're doing is we are doing a get type on uh, new pump, new dot pump, and then we're doing a get method of shib. Very interesting. And lastly, we're doing a dot invoke on that. And then here, this is just dollar null object array of, uh, we'll call, just call this windows path. And that is getting the second byte array. So we'll just call this byte array one, byte array two. So that becomes byte array one there and byte array two there. And then hbar is really just combining these two and 
executing them. So in terms of figuring out what these byte arrays actually are, we actually don't even need these. We don't need the load or the null or the reflection assembly or these variables. All we really need is to echo byte array one. So if we do this, we'll call it for the sake of preserving which one we're talking about, we'll copy that. So now we have our PHP and we know that it's going to be echoing something out. So we can just copy that out like that. And then what we can go back in and do is call that to, and then we can PHP that file again into a new. And now we have a 46K and a 55K file that have been output. And if we do a file on those, we see that they are PE32 executable. Now, the interesting thing is that from the code that we commented out, it's taking the loaded byte array here, which is byte array one, and looking for new pump. So if we run strings on this one, we see PE sections, very interesting. And then we see a whole lot of blobs. Here's our .NET framework version. Pump, that's new pump. We were looking for that. Uh, lots of modules. Shib, that's the method we were looking for. And then we were going to invoke that. And here we see some of those variables that were in the uh, scripts before. So if we do a strings on this guy, again, we see the .NET framework. We see PE section names. It's looking for X509 certificates, has some hash functions, checks to see if it's connected to something. There's It receives data. Uh, there's some syncing that goes on, pinging. Uh, SS, it has SSL and TCP client functionality. It detects sandboxes. So that's, that's nice to, or useful to know. It's able to execute shell commands. It creates encryptors and decryptors, uh, has some anti-analysis functionality in here. So overall, this, this is already looking really suspicious. And if we check this hash out in virus total, what we see is that that's console D showed up as console DLL and it's popping the, all sorts of hits on, uh, on virus total. Some people are calling it a, an injector. Some are saying it's a backdoor, but definitely something that is uh, not good to see on, on anybody's system or website. If we take a look at the, the uh, RSET file, we can see that 46 vendors, stub.exe here, is showing up, and it, much like the other one, lots of backdoors, behaves like Win32, Ferrite, Samus, lots of different names, lots of people are calling it different things. Fortinet thinks it's a uh, coin miner, so it might have mining capabilities in there, but overall, it, it seems like both of these dropped binaries are really, you know, significantly malicious, and it's just odd that the package they arrive in is not actually getting uh, detected by that many things. I hope you found that journey interesting and seeing how to convert PowerShell to PHP and then dumping things out to files rather than having them execute through PowerShell is hopefully useful to you. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you found it interesting or helpful. Press subscribe if you want to be notified when a new video goes live and leave a comment if you have a question or feedback. See you next time.